Hello everyone. My name is Theo and I'm here to introduce you our incredible speaker for today, Paul. Uh, how is everyone doing today? Can you guys hear me well? Please type yes to make sure everyone can hear me. I will appreciate if you just drop a quick uh, yes on the chat below. That would be great. Perfect. So uh, today you're going to hear Paul, a professional financial trader for uh, 27 years. He will explain you about the indicator RSI. It's an indicator uh, widely used by many traders. And it's an incredible tool for every one of us in trading to have it into our arsenal of tools. So I would, uh, I would ask you to pay full attention to what Paul is going to explain today. I'm sure you're going to gain a lot of value and you're going to be able to implement instantly all this knowledge to your trading. Okay, for those you uh, join us for first time, please make sure you like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And Paul, I pass the microphone to you. Hi, Theo. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's great. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, yeah, I will uh, share my screen and we'll, we'll, we'll crack on, shall we? Just make sure that you can share your screen. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Boom. Excellent. There we go. Um, good, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, great to uh, have you here. Um, fabulous to have you here. Thank you for the introduction, um, Theo. Welcome, everybody. Here we are today to talk about uh, using RSI in your uh, trading. Um, as we have, uh, as here will have said, there, okay, if you're uh, joining us for the first time, great to have you here. Um, you know, if you're here in the room with us, okay, by all means, put your comments in the chat box. If you're uh, watching this later on the Admiral's YouTube channel, be sure to like and subscribe the, uh, the, the channel and, and give us a thumbs up. Or, or even a thumbs down, all right? I don't mind, all feedback is uh, is good for us. And uh, yeah, it's, as I said, fabulous to, to have you here to talk about kind of an interesting little topic here in terms of using RSI in your uh, in your own trading. So um, for those of you, here we are, Admirals, a uh, global forex and CFD broker with local support, licensed and regulated across a wide range of regulatory environments. Uh, providing competitive spreads on the most popular trading products and allowing you to engage with markets using the very popular trading platforms of MT4 and MT5. If you have any questions about Admirals, please get in touch with your account representative. They'll be very happy to help guide you. Uh, also, well worth noting uh, today, okay, is that uh, the kind of uh, advances in uh, Admiral's offers to their clients, namely that uh, not only are spreads loading, but also the size of trade, okay, is also decreasing as well. So now you're able to trade things like micro lots on, you know, those popular uh, indices, DAX, Dow Jones, okay, uh, and also the uh, NASDAQ. You know, all of these things make a big difference as you're, a, uh, as you're trading, gives you an opportunity to engage with uh, markets uh, at, at lower levels. And that's what, you know, new traders did need to do uh, in order to build up their knowledge and experience of engaging with such markets. Uh, and as always, as I mentioned there earlier, okay, what you'll find is that, you know, you'll find both this video and a plethora of other educational content is provided on the uh, Admirals YouTube channel. You can see it there at Admirals Global. Be sure to go and uh, subscribe to that. As I said, absolute you know plethora of uh, great stuff on there from myself and uh, my colleagues there, okay, and uh, Theo and Jens and the uh, the rest of the Admirals team. So uh, be sure to uh, to sign up and make the most of it. So what are we going to talk about? Today, well, we're going to talk about, not unsurprisingly, what is the RSI? What is the Relative Strength Index? And we'll talk about how the traders use it. And we'll talk about a simple way 
that you could use it to create your own simple trading plan. And then if there's time available at the end, what we'll do is we'll take a little look at the, uh, the live markets. So um, as always, it's useful to, to understand you know, who's here with us today. I appreciate here on uh, Admirals, we have a, a wide range okay, of uh, uh, traders with experience joining us from people who are complete beginners to people who've been trading for a year uh, for a great while. Okay, so you're all very welcome. It would be interesting to know, you know, for those of you here joining us today, you know, uh, how many of you know what the RSI is? How many of you actually utilize it in your own trading? What, if any, has been your experiences using the RSI? Has it helped you? Has it hindered you? Have you maybe not understood it? It'd be great to know and understand that. You can just put that in the chat box and that can actually help me sort of give you as, uh, as much help and support as possible. Uh, and as always, I recognize that here on the uh, English speaking uh, webinars, we have a truly global audience who join us, all right? And so, uh, you know, wherever you are joining us from the world, all right, um, you're very welcome. Really appreciate it here for you to be there. We hope that you are uh, uh, safe and well and flourishing in this rather uh, dynamic and interesting 2022 that we find ourselves in here. But as I said, all of us here at Admirals, uh, hope you're uh, hope you're well and safe in uh, in 2022. Um, Tracy, great to have you there. Tracy says, you know, uh, with regards to RSI, I've used it every now and again, but still learning. Thanks. That's fantastic, Tracy. Thank you for uh, thank you for your insight. You know, that's what these sessions are for to, to basically to help you with your learning, to help educate you, to help get you, you know, just a little bit further on in your own trading journey. Uh, George says, I use the RSI and EMA crossover to time my entries. Fabulous. Okay, that's great. That's great to hear that, uh, George. I appreciate that. Um, what we're going to do today is show you one way that you could use RSI. Maybe it's the way you utilize it already. Maybe it'll give you just another way to, to look at RSI, another way to sort of just consider how it can actually yeah, help you. Carlos says, so far, I only use it as a, as a filter for shorting. That's interesting. Would love to hear more about that, um, Carlos. I'm always fascinated to see how how you know, traders take these tools and, and effectively meld them into their own trading style. Uh, you know, and I'm always fascinated to hear that. Certainly never any judgment from me, okay, in terms of, you know, we are we are all learning, right? You know, we're all constantly learning. We're always on that path with our own particular trading. If uh, you know, if anybody tells you that um, they've, you know, they've, they've made it and they've got nothing else to learn about trading, uh, well, then I suggest that they are probably about to, to get a, a bit of a kicking, all right, from the market, because just by the very nature of trading, you're constantly always learning, constantly always evolving, there's always something to, to, you know, to embrace, to learn, to develop either, you know, about knowledge of the markets, or even just about your own knowledge of yourself as a particular uh, trader. So um, that's great. Thank you very much for those uh, comments, ladies and gentlemen. It's clear that you know RSI is well known to, to many people and you've got different ways of using it. And that's, that's fabulous. That's absolutely fantastic. As I said, I'm going to talk about RSI today and I'm going to share with you one particular way that you might be able to utilize it yourself. Uh, and certainly for you know, newer traders, uh, hopefully that's something that's you know, simple, it's easy to use that you could take away and, and utilize in your own trading tomorrow, because that's actually what we're at. That's actually what we want. You know, we want to be able to sort of share with you ideas and concepts that you can just take away and then utilize yourself, all right, in your own trading from tomorrow. So for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name's uh, Paul, all right, I've traded for many, many years, all right, and um, I've been fortunate, I've traded for hedge funds, I've traded for high net worth clients, uh, primarily, I tend to focus on trading FX indices and commodities for myself uh, and tend for longer term trading. I tend to be a trend trader uh, and for shorter term intraday trading, I tend to be a reversal or mean reversion trader. So some of those elements will come with us today on our, uh, on our journey. So there you go. Let's let's kick into you know, what we're really going to be talking about, about utilizing RSI in your trading. You know, as the slide says, you know, the RSI is a popular trading indicator for many traders. You can look across social media and you'll find many, many traders who will utilize it and utilize it in many different ways. And we've just even seen here, OK, from our own small group, there are people who utilize it. There are people who utilize it in different ways. Uh, and as the slide says, what I sometimes find is that many newbie traders use it incorrectly. Or rather, maybe not incorrectly, they utilize it how the, the textbook tells you to utilize it. But invariably, that is not necessarily the most smart or savvy way for you to utilize and engage with it in your own trading. 
and there are better ways to use the indicator to help you with your trading decisions. And that's what you have to remember that this is, okay? You know, any technical analysis, any technical indicators, you know, none of them are perfect, all right? None of them, you know, they offer absolute, you know, 100% guarantees. There are no such things in trading. But what it is there to do is to help you, give you a framework that allows you to make better trading decisions, all right? And that's it. You know, you're just, you're just looking for a framework that can help you make a decision. Am I a buyer? Am I a seller? Do I sit on my hands? That's really, you boil it all down to it. That's the kind of one of the three questions that you have to, you know, that you have to answer. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to show you how you can develop a simple trading plan using this indicator. As I said, there are many different ways to use the RSI, but actually I'm just going to share with you one way, okay? Just a nice simple way that newbie traders in particular could just take on board, understand, and start to utilize in their own particular trading. But as I said, if you've got different ways of using RSI, if you've had different ways of having success, then great. It'd be great to hear from you. Great to understand that. I always particularly, you know, I love hearing how other traders, you know, view markets and view, you know, how they go about making their own trading decisions. So <clears throat> what is the RSI? RSI is the relative strength index. As I said, it is a very popular trading indicator. It is also a member of the oscillator family of indicators. What does that generally mean? Well, uh, as the name implies, basically the indicator will oscillate right between zero and 100, right? And that's what we'll see. And that's how new traders start to, to, to look at it in particular. But what we can do is with, you know, with a little bit of savviness, a little bit of experience, we can utilize it to help us determine the trend, help us time our entries, and, and a good deal more. As the slide says, it was developed by Jay Wells Wilder back in the 1980s to measure the speed and change of price movements. And, and lots of people will still utilize it. And as I said, it'll oscillate between a, zero and 100. But A, how do we utilize it? How does the textbook tell us to utilize it? And how do we actually look to utilize it? Because there's going to be a little bit of difference, ladies and gentlemen. So be sure to stick with us so I can explain it all to you. Yeah, so there you go. You know, there's a, there's a, a big old picture on uh, RSI, okay, the indicator there. Uh, and, you know, hooray, you might be looking at that saying, well, you know, how does that help me, Paul? Well, in, in RSI, what we'll see, get a build uh, drawing tool here, Paul, is that normally most people will have a, a period setting of 14 on it. Um, that is not necessarily set in stone, and I know lots of people who use RSIs, they use multiple RSIs on different uh, settings in order to help them. But for today, we're just going to use the standard simple settings that when you know utilize that, when you bring that up in either your MT4 or MT5 platform, how it's set up, because I want you to be able to work away and, and utilize it yourself, know and understand it and use it from tomorrow. As I said, it effectively, it's one of the oscillators, and it will oscillate between zero and hundred, as we've got uh, we've got here zero and hundred. Now, as the textbook will tell you, is that when the RSI is above seventy, so you know, have a look at it here, uh, have a look at it here, okay, even a little bit here, that is invariably where it is deemed to be overbought. All right, as an oscillator, it's stretched and it's deemed to be overbought. On the flip side, the number thirty. OK, the number 30, when the RSI is below 30, so you know, there's a few examples of it here, OK, coming down here, is that is also when the people deem it to be oversold. OK, so above 70, it's overbought. Below 30, it is oversold. That is, that's the standard textbook definition of the RSI, as I said, on a setting of 40. And, you know, and, and as you can see for yourself, I, you know, I didn't want it to even put, it doesn't really matter what the, the chart is, you know, in terms of what you're looking at, it is just the RSI will do its thing, it will oscillate in that particular range, okay, that's what it will work its way uh, away between do. So Tracy says, what is 14? Well, you know, 14 is just the period, okay, so if uh, this was a daily chart, what would be happening is that, you know, the RSI would be working on the last 14 periods of the last 14 days, if it's a monthly chart, it'll be working on the kind of the last 14 months. If it was a one minute chart, it'd be looking on the last you know, 14 minutes. It's just really the, the period that you set. And what you'll find is that 
know, when you sort of just, you know, uh, enable the indicator on the platform, it normally tends to come up with a standard setting of 14, okay? And a lot of that is because, a lot of that is because a lot of people will be using it on the daily chart, and so it looks back the last couple of weeks, effectively, just giving you a little bit of uh, indication. You know, not unsurprisingly, the kind of the, the, the bigger the number, well, then actually, you know, the kind of, let's say, the slower the oscillations, the shorter the number, okay, the, you know, the faster the oscillations. So, you know, you get into, um, happen to find, you get into a kind of like a Goldilocks, you remember that kind of childhood talk story, you know, you're getting into that kind of Goldilocks moment is, you know, you don't want it, to, you know, you don't want it too fast. Okay, you don't want it too slow. It's about just about getting it right. And as a general rule, as I said, most people will use the uh, 14 period as uh, as their standard. So I hope that uh, hope that helps you there. I hope that uh, explains a little bit of that for you. But you know, as I said, we're uh, kind of interested to know. Well, you know, how do we utilize? It? What's the sorry? You're very welcome, Tracy. Thanks. Good question. All right, that's what I'm that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. And um, you know, how do we utilize it? Well, you know, as I've said, there are many different different uses for the RSI. When traders first learn about RSI, they tend to gravitate towards using overbought and oversold values. Why is that? Well, because it's, it's very simple and easy to understand. And it's also quite a visual reference. You can quickly look at the RSI and see, you know, is the indicator above 70, where it'd be overbought or below 30, where it's oversold. You know, and as it says there, many new traders will simply sell once overbought, or buy the market once over uh, sold. However, there are problems with this, okay? It's, it's, uh, it's not as simple and as easy as that, I'm sorry to say, ladies and gentlemen. If you look at this, for example, here, okay, this is the, the, the old DAX on the four hour chart. And, you know, and the question is, let's look at the relationship between price and the RSI. So remember what I was saying here is, you know, once price is oversold, okay, once beneath 30, it's deemed to be oversold. You know, and we can see here, okay, that, you know, price did, price basically, the indicator started trending and trading beneath 30. So as I said, many new traders, once, you know, they see that something is oversold, they'll just automatically buy it because they think it's oversold, it's going to reverse, it'll fly up, this is my opportunity to buy a bottom. But as you can see in this price action, you know, we, we, we were oversold here and we stayed, even though we nipped a little bit above it, we pretty much stayed mostly oversold for most of the next week. And you can actually see what happened. All right, you know, the indicator may have been oversold, but just because the indicator is oversold doesn't mean the price is going to reverse, all right? Remember, the indicator is always a little bit lagging. It's always a bit delayed because it's taking data from price price is king. So you can see there, even though the indicator was oversold, if you'd have just bought, you know, if you'd have just bought here, okay, when, you know, when the indicator was uh, oversold, thinking it's going up, well, you know, you'd have had a rather, you rather uncomfortable and, and challenging week ahead. So as I said, new traders will gravitate very often to basically just buying oversold, selling overbought conditions. That's what people like to think. But generally, I'm afraid to say, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't, it isn't as simple as that. It isn't as clear as simple as that. So, you know, I always wait that just because an indicator is overbought or oversold, the market can still keep going. And that's, you know, hopefully that just shows you there's a good example there that even though it's oversold, you know, the, uh, <laughs> the, the freight train, which was the short trend is still going and you don't really, you know, you don't want to fight that. You don't want to step in front of that. You know, you actually want to find ways to, to, to ride with that. So there you go. So that, you know, that is how a lot of people do it, but actually what I'm going to share with you, a, a simple, different way that you could look at it. So, you know, if we're not going to use overbought and oversold, specifically, how could we use it? Well, instead of just using pure overbought and oversold regions, we can focus on using the center line with the RSI. You can draw a center line on your RSI indicator using just the horizontal line, whether you're on MT4, or MT5, and amending it, lining it up to show a center line of 50. All right. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have the opportunity to use the center line for, for bias. And that's what we're going to utilize it first and foremost. We're going to use it, utilize it for bias. So when the indicator is above the 50 line, we have a bullish bias. Okay. You know, we are looking to be long. When the indicator is below the 50, we have a bearish bias. Okay. We'd be looking to be shorter. All right. We'd be looking to go to, to sell, to be on the short side of the market. 
So it's a very, very simple, just a simple amendment, a simple evolution, okay, in terms of understanding and utilizing the RSI, just by being able to draw on a center line at 50. And even there, you can see that basically, you know, once it's above 50, we have, you know, we have a bullish bias. Once it's below 50, we have a bearish bias. And that's just, you know, that's just the first step. There's, there's a little bit more to it than that, which we'll, uh, which we'll go into. So here in this particular case, this is a weekly chart on the uh, weekly chart on the Aussie dollar. And what we're looking to see is, well, what was the relationship between the RSI indicator and the red center line? Uh, and actually what we can see here is that, you know, the price has been in a downtrend, okay? It's been beneath the 50 and the 200 and it's just ground its way down there, okay? Just, you know, nothing, not, you know, it hasn't fallen off a cliff. It has just ground its way down there, right? Just look at the uh, relationship between the RSI and the red center line. For pretty much all of this, for the vast majority of the period, okay, it actually was below the 50, wasn't it? It was below the 50. Remember that? That is just giving us a bias, all right? It's just giving us a bias that, you know, we want to have a bearish bias. And the price action is effectively showing us that. Uh, and what we actually get here is, you know, we get a little pop up above it, all right? And price does start to move up beneath it. But then actually what happens is it comes right back down below it, doesn't it? So... This is a way that it can help you, right? You know, if you're a new trader and you're just trying to grasp, okay, is this, you know, a good start? Is this a good trend? Or maybe just being able to have the RSI with the center line might just help give you a little bit of confidence, a little bit of self-belief in recognizing, yep, in this case, this isn't a downtrend. It's, it's a scruffy downtrend in places, okay? But welcome to trading, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't always look pretty, okay? What you just need to be able to do is to understand, right, you know, what is there a trend in place? And if there is, well, then, you know, what do I need to be doing? As a new trader, I tend to just say, well, basically keep it simple and sort of stick to sort of just trying to, to surf the good trends when they show up for you. So I hope that kind of just gives you a little bit of an idea of how you can possibly utilize it, especially on like kind of longer time frames. But, you know, how could we use this information to help us build a trade plan, all right? You know, it's all really, all well and good, giving, uh, you know, giving us a bias, but actually, you know, Paul, how do we turn this into a trade plan? How do we utilize this information to, to make good trading setups? Well, what we can start to do is to utilize this bias to help us take entries into trends, all right? And actually, what we do is we utilize two charts. Okay, we utilize two, two charts. So we have a higher time frame one, which is a bias or trend direction chart. So we'll utilize a higher one to get an indication of this is the trend we're in. And then what we have is a lower time frame, an execution time frame. This is where the overbought or oversold elements of the indicator can actually help us. All right. So what we normally say is that the bias chart should be one time frame higher than the execution chart. So what we normally find is the way the MetaTrader platform is set up is that there's normally a, a, you know, a four to five time fold difference between the uh, uh, between the, you know, the, the time charts. So what you might have is you might have a weekly bias chart, but then you execute your trades on the daily chart while well, you know, the sort of the time frame that is lower. Or maybe you have it on the daily basis, okay? Use the daily basis for your, for your bias, uh, but your four hour chart is for execution. But for those of you, you know, kind of utilizing lower time frames, well, then what you'd be saying is you might have the four hour chart to give you, you know, the, the bias, but one hour chart is where you execute your trade setups. Uh, and if you're an intraday trader, well, then you might be looking at, you know, a one hour bias with 15 minute executions. So. That is actually how you can, uh, that's how you can look to do it. So we're utilizing two charts, okay? So invariably, you know, what we have here, this is, you know, you can see here, probably just there, is that, you know, it's an Aussie four hour chart. And what I've done is, what I've done is I basically, you know, when, when the uh, bias has changed, I've just drawn a horizontal, horizontal line and a red line to just, just, just to basically help me, my, my bias is bearish, you know, and actually you can see the price action just continues down there, even though, as you can see, the RSI is also beneath the 50. But then I'm looking at the one hour chart to start to identify, well, actually show me a few trade cells so that what I can do is actually I can effectively look to trade pullbacks in that trend. That's what I'm trying to do. All right. So as I said, 
lots of different ways to utilize the RSI in trading. What I'm doing is using, giving a very simple one, almost, you know, very simple, almost methodical one that you can take away all right, and utilizing your trading from tomorrow. That's that's what we, uh, that's what you know, I always try to do here when you know delivering these uh, sessions is is just give you something you can take away and utilize in your own trading from tomorrow. Because I appreciate you know that's what um, that's what people want. That's what people want. So let's get into that a little bit more information, a little bit more, a little bit of a deeper dig. How could we use this information to help us build a trade plan? Well. When we have a very clear trend bias on the higher time frame, you know, the higher bias chart, well, we then drop down to the lower time frame execution chart and almost look for the opposite environment. So when the bias chart, the higher time frame bias chart is bearish, for example, what we'll be doing is we're looking for bullish conditions, all right, uh, you know, on the execution chart. And when the bias is bullish, we're looking for bearish conditions on the execution chart. What does that actually mean? Well, we'll, we'll I'll show it here in a uh, in a moment. What you're doing is utilizing price action setups to take a trade in the direction of the higher time frame, the higher bias chart. You're effectively looking, <coughs> excuse me, to use effectively trading pullbacks in a trend. So what does that actually mean? Remember what I was saying here, Aussie, this is the Aussie four hour, Aussie one hour. Once the Aussie four hour, okay, is the bias, okay, and you can see there the RSI is beneath the 50 center line. I've just drawn in, okay, a, you know, a, a, a horizontal line there, red to just remind me I've got a bearish um, a sentiment, bearish bias. And then what I'm looking at here on the, uh, the one hour chart is every time price trades above the 50, okay? trades above the 50, that is when I start to get interested, okay? That's when I start to get interested. I'm just drawing on a little bit. I've got a couple more examples here, but better examples. But what I'm doing is when I'm seeing that, okay, when price is, you know, pushed up a little bit bullish on the execution, remember, I'm expecting a longer time frame, right? That bias to, to reassert itself. And when it does, this is giving me an opportunity, in that case, to basically sell rallies, right? To sell pullbacks in the trend. That's what I want. It's giving me an opportunity opportunity to sort of join the existing trend and, and to do that well without, um, you know, by just simple utilizing the RSI to give me an indication of higher time frame bias, and then also a lower time frame execution plan. That's it. Nice and simple, quite methodical, right? And, um, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more and go through that a little bit more now. So how can we use this information to build a, you know, another trade plan? Well, just remember, you know, your stop loss, you never trade that stop loss and that will go above the recent high or the low when you're seeing your particular uh, entry setup you stay with the trade all right until it exits the opposite overbought or oversold condition so if price if we're in a you know if we're in a four hour bearish sentiment price becomes overbought or bore overbought well then once we short in that we'll stay with it until it goes demonstrates that it is oversold uh, to us if so, you know, if selling on overbought conditions, then you stay with the trade until it, you know, until it exits oversold conditions. If buying on oversold conditions, then you stay with the trade until it exits overbought conditions. And I'll show you that. I'll show you that on the charts in a minute. That's that's actually a better way to, to do it. But you know, as I said, this is almost as I said, just quite a simple, methodical way for you to do it. And that's what we're particularly looking at. So here's an example, all right? Here's an example. So you know, you can see here. Look up, as it says, look at when the RSI indicates beneath the center line on the four hour bias chart. Okay, so it happens here. You know, and as I said, I've just drawn the basically, you know, big long horizontal line, which you can utilize on the uh, uh, on the, on the MetaTrader platforms. You know, so it's just, and you can see for yourself, all right, you know, it, it's, it's you know, the, the indicator is beneath 50, isn't it? Remember, that's what we're saying. The indicator is beneath 50, we're utilizing that to basically give us, you know, give us a bias, all right? You know, we just want to give us a bias. And what is helping us with that is also the fact that, you know, hopefully you can see the price action, you know, it, it is in a nice downtrend, okay? Good trends leap off the chart. You don't need to fight them. Price is there, it's moving down nicely. It's beneath the moving averages. The RSI is beneath 50. You know, we have a good four hour trend, all right? We've got a good four hour trend. What I'm looking for is, well, you know, are the ways that I can basically sell into that, sell rallies in that trend, as ways and means for me to get on board and, and trade that trend as, as as hard as I possibly as hard as I possibly can. 
So when I go down to the one hour chart, all right, well, look at what happens. Look at the opportunities that are created and price goes above the center line on the one hour execution chart, all right? Remember, the four hour is the bias. In this case, the one hour is the execution chart. So, you know, as I said, we, you know, because I've drawn this in, I know not to look at the chart, know when, you know, we've gone into a bearish bias. And what we can see here is, you know, price is basically, you know, I've just drawn these little pink blocks here. Price got up above the 50 there, didn't it? Price had also kind of, you know, it, uh, you know, it, it sort of pulled its way back there into the 50 period moving average. Okay, and so what I'm able to do is look at the price action there, look at it with sort of reversing there and being able to sell with that with my stop, okay, with my stop above that recent high. Uh, and we can see this happens a few times. Okay, you know, price, nice trend down, price pulls back. Okay, we see the RSI goes above 50 there, doesn't it? At the same time as price is just hitting the 50 period moving average before it drops again, okay? So we know we can short there with our stop above comes back again, right? Comes back again, comes back up above it, does a little bit of a uh, uh, a kind of a, what, we, what I would look at as a kind of three bar uh, breakout before it drops down again and stops above the high, comes back again, you know, and, and you might actually be thinking, well, do you know what, Paul, maybe, maybe it's changing. But remember the four hour bias is still down. The four hour bias is still down. What happens is, you know, once again, you get the opportunity to short, the stop above the high, price moves down again. Price pulls back. And what's happened is gone above the 50 period moving, and it's gone above the 50 center line on the RSI. At the same time, it's going above the 50 period moving average uh, before it basically starts to break down again. We have stops above the uh, stops above the high, okay, and you know, shorting as it breaks out, okay, when the price action gives you an indication it's ready to move, and you can see price continues down strongly. So, as I said, you've got four hour bias, all right, you've got four hour bias. We don't want to fight that. What we want is every time it pulls back, okay? Every time it pulls back, we see price pulling back at the same time, the price, the RSI is above the 50. Once that starts to reverse and turn, look at the price section, the price section of the RSI. That's telling us that, you know, the pullback is over. We want to basically be shorting this, okay? This is our opportunity to basically sell rallies in a downtrend. That's what we're looking to try and do. And, you know, what I suggest is, you know, you just, you trade it every one. OK, because what happens is, as many experienced traders will know, you know, trends never last as long as we want. So when you do get a good trend, it's important that you basically ride it as much as you can. OK, think of yourself as like a good surfer. All right. You're on your summer holidays here. You're not you don't try and surf. You know, a good surfer doesn't try and surf every uh, every wave. But what they do is, you know, when they have good periods and good days, you know, they, they surf as hard as they can. And you as a trend trader should be looking to do the same as well. Uh, you know, and that was our entries. And look at where we get out. Okay, look at where we get. Remember, we're shorting here, stops here, and we stay with it until it comes out. Okay, in this case of you know oversold conditions. Okay, so you know we're getting out. We're getting out here. You know when we're, we're in here, shorting here, shorting here. Not until we come out of our oversold conditions here that basically we're getting out. When we're actually shorting here. Okay, on the final uh, session, it's not until basically price comes back out of it that we look to sort of effectively get out okay and that's what you know that's our kind of simple exit rules as well so you know we know we know where we're getting in we know where our stop loss is we know where we're getting out okay so you know we have a nice little you know, also just you know take that trade trend with it okay and just and ride it as much as uh, ride it as much as you can using the rsi to to help you with the, uh, the rsi is giving you bias rsi is giving you you know execution setup arena and it's also the RSI giving you when to exit the, uh, you know, exit the, the trade and step away from it. Uh, so, you know, here's another example. This is the pound against the Aussie on the, the weekly chart, okay? Standard RSI 14 setting. What we can see here is that, you know, look at how the, uh, the kind of green line to show when the RSI turned to kind of the bullish bias. Price is also getting above the moving averages there, okay? So, you know, we're, you know, we're happy. Okay, we're well, happy people. All right. Okay. You know, we know we've got we've got bullish bias, price is moving up. Okay. So, you know, we know we've got our you know our higher bias on the on the weekly chart. And then what happens is then we can look down towards the daily chart. All right. Look at the daily chart for you know opportunities to sort of you know to basically in this case buy the pullbacks. 
by the pullback to Kane and just kicks off straight uh, straight away. Okay, price just basically comes looking for remember for price to become beneath the 50 to come into the selling area before we get ready to buy. And we can see if that's what happens. Okay, and we buy, we're buying there. Your stop is beneath those recent lows. Price comes up, it comes back down. Okay, just gets underneath the 50 there. Gives you an idea, right? We know where we're buying, we know where our stop loss is beneath the lows. Price comes back down here, just there we go, just tickles away there. Beneath that 50, we're getting ready, okay? And then it basically effectively returns and away it goes, all right? We can see just a few examples there, okay? Price comes back beneath that 50 there, all right? We look for price action to reverse uh, and off we and off we particularly um, off we particularly go. Uh, and that's what we're looking for then. And what you can also see is, you can see, remember, when you're getting into these trades, is that, remember, our exit is when the price comes back out from the overbought condition. So when price is here, this is where you know this is where you'll be getting out. For these, you know, for these buys, okay, here for these buys, price gets into overbought when it comes back out of it. And here, that is when we're looking to get out of it, okay, as part of our trade. So, you know, we have the RSI giving us the bias, the RSI one hour execution chart giving us when, you know, when we want to be looking to, to get to buy that market. And we also have the RSI when it's coming out of overbought conditions that's actually telling us when we get an opportunity to, to, to exit that trade, okay, to, to step away from that trade. So yeah, as I said, it becomes quite methodical, becomes quite uh, uh, yeah, methodical for us in a way to actually able to do it. And I recognize that for new traders, that can actually be very helpful. That can just give you just a simple way of actually operating that allows you to, to basically find the, you know, the, the, the bias and execution timeframe that suits you because you know, I recognize that a lot of you are, you know, you're not trading full time, you might be trading around, you know, trading around a day job, trading around lifestyle commitments, all right? And so actually finding the, the time frames for both the bias and execution that you can do that around your trading, that can actually be enormously helpful for you. So uh, those of you who've been here before with me know that I always like to leave you with a little bit of homework, ladies and gentlemen, just take away few things okay to, to work at to understand this so here's the thing go through your favorite charts all right i'm sure you all have your own favorite charts and identify possible rsi trading opportunities using the bias and the execution charts so you know maybe your maybe your, you know maybe your favorite chart is the 15 minutes chart maybe that's where you find you, you do most of your execution on well why not have a little look then at the you know, one hour chart okay and just see well hang on a minute you know, if I'd have used the RSI 50 center line, would that have actually helped me keep me on the right side of the market more often? Would that have actually helped me in that way? You know, you might be surprised. You might actually be surprised that they know that that's been there and could have helped you all along. But, you know, have a look at that, you know, the bias and the execution charts. How often did it occur? All right? How often did that come around? Where did they occur? Did they occur in the same places as your normal trade setups, right? Or where you was there the opportunity to sort of you know get into good trends? Did it provide good trading opportunities for you? Was it the opportunity that you were hoping for? And maybe is this something that you could add to your own trading, um, you know, your own trading plan that would enable you to, to trade a little bit better uh, going forward? Just you know, as I said, I always like to give you a little bit of homework because I appreciate you know you can listen and watch these things, but it's not until you get dig in and do a little bit of the work. You Self that you realize, well, hang on a minute, this actually works for me. This, this, this could work for me. This could be very, very simple. So, um, before we uh switch across to the live charts, we've got a few minutes left. Is you know, just remember that the RSI is a very popular trading indicator. I mean, it's been around since the 1980s from J. Wells Wider. But remember what I said, most newbie traders, they're using it incorrectly. They just basically literally sell when price gets overboard. Or they just buy when price gets oversold, all right? That rarely works, you know, long term. But adding a center line, okay, at 50, that can help you establish the trend, that can actually help you establish the bias. And what you can do is look to use a bias and an execution chart to just create a simple trading plan. That's what we're particularly looking for. And what it's looking to do is basically it's effectively helping you to trade pullbacks in trends which is, you know, for what many new traders will do, is actually the best way you can operate, okay? The best thing you can do, it'll help you enormously, uh, you know, being able to just give you a, a methodical way to go and find what the bias is and then basically utilise that as a, as a way to trade the trends. So 
But uh, why don't we have, have a little look on a live mark? We've got a couple of minutes left and stuff, so we can uh, we can do that. But um, before we do that, okay, just uh, you know, just a little bit of a heads up. So the next session is actually going to be it's going to be this Friday, okay? And so at the same time on Friday, two o'clock London time, join me again to learn about how to use a versatile swing trading strategy, uh, including about you know, talk about you know how does swing trading differ? What are the kind of best setups? How could we utilize it every day? So. That'll be two o'clock Friday, 8th of July. Check your inbox for the webinar link or head over to the Admiral site website to be able to sign up for this. Uh, and as always, OK, if you've got uh, any particular questions, all right, OK, regarding this particular session, you can uh, get in touch, OK, AdmiralMarkets.com at our website, or you can see that all the different ways that you're actually able to contact us from, you know, from email, YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, Instagram, Twitter, OK? We are everywhere, OK? We are, are omnipresent everywhere. So there's lots of different ways you can get in touch with the uh, Admiral's team, and they'll be very happy to help uh, guide you. So why don't we just bear with me a moment. What we'll do is we'll switch across just for a couple of moments and just have a little look at what's been uh, happening there. Uh, so just bear with us a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Let's just see what uh, we can do. So just uh, here we go. Just one moment. Da, da, da. Okay. Boom. Okie dokie. So uh, here we go. Here we go. So um, here is, uh, what's this? Pound against dollar, four hour chart. Um, as I said, I, I hope you can still hear me. Hope you can still see me. Hope you can see the charts. Now this is the Admiral's MetaTrader platform. Uh, I've just got it here on pound against dollar. Uh, you know, and what we can see, you know, what we can see here is just recently, okay, over the last, you know, what's that over the last mm, week or so, you know, seven, eight trading days. Uh, I'm hoping that let's get the old drawing tool. I'm hoping you can see that basically, you know, ha having pivoted around a little bit, as not it, around the 50, you know, it, it kind of got beneath it, right? You know, clearly got beneath it, as well at the same time, price getting beneath the 50 period moving average. You know, uh, and what we've done is just, you know, I've just, you know, as I said, just drawing in there, the, you know, the, uh, the, the, the kind of um, vertical line there, right? Just to basically help us. And I'll just put another one in here. Just to maybe try and help us boom so there we go so you know i've drawn it in red because you know when i switch down to the execution charts it just reminds me you know i'm looking i'm looking on the short side all right okay i'm looking bearish and you know, i've grieved when i'm on the bullish side so um here we go so you know let me just clear some of these drawings and i just that should um uh, bear with me one second da, da, da. Is that 28th of june june okay so it's just Print out and we'll zoom out a little bit. There we go. Okay, excellent. So, um, so when I go down to the execution chart, the one hour chart, you can see here where I've drawn in where it's basically, you know, it, is, it has come for us. Uh, you know, and, and then let's just take a little look here, okay? Let's just take a little look at, you know, remember what we're saying is on the execution chart, we're looking for, um, you know, when price gets into the kind of above there, okay? And here we go. That's what I'm just doing here. I'm just going to. Basically, draw these on here. Just to boom, 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 bear with me one moment. Put these on so they're on the charts. So I'm going to have a few of them. You know, you can see there is a hopefully. There we go. See, hopefully, you know, there's a couple of areas here where it's got overbought. You know, it's coming to the buying. Okay, it's coming to the buying before it has collapsed again. I'm just going to just here we go. Just draw that a little bit bigger. We'll just have this one here. This one here, and just basically uh, make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. So you can just try and uh, get an understanding of what we're looking at. So remember, we've got you know we've got bearish bias, and what we're looking for is you know execution on the lower time frame for when price gets for when price gets above. Uh, you know, and um, whenever price gets above, then we're looking for we are looking for here we go. Uh, you know, we're just looking for price action that just gives an indication that we just want to be basically um, selling, all right? And you know what? That's what we you know have here. You're looking for basically rejection candles here, okay? That are just giving us the uh, indication of what we want to do. So here we go. Let's just draw that one in there, and that one in there, and then grab that one in there as well. So hopefully you can see as I. Draw the two, you know, the kind of price breaks out, it runs away, price pulls back here, doesn't it? But then it kind of collapses away. Price pulls into here, 
it does fall back a bit, but it doesn't, you know, it's not nothing, no perfection. It does actually just needs to pull back even deeper. Then it puts in, you know, that's a lovely evening star formation there, right? You know, as we were getting there before price falls away. Remember what we we're saying is that, you know, if you're if you're short here, your stop loss would go above the, uh, the, the recent high and you'll stay with the trade until it basically, until it comes out of the, until it comes out of the oversold conditions, okay? So even when we're here, okay, you know, it's you're basically you're getting out of it here, getting out of it there. <clears throat> All right, this one, you know, I think you're probably you're taking a loss on that first setup, but then what we see is, you know, we get the, the second setup and actually even the third setup, and basically you're not exiting until that trade there comes back out of the oversold condition. So remember, that's what we're looking for. Four hour, you know, and, and I'm just, because I know I like to swing trade, you know, you've got a four hour there giving the bias, then you've got the, down to the one hour execution chart, and you know, as that pulls back above the 50, right, then you get the reversal price action. That's our trade, okay, we're getting short, stops above the highs, stay with the trade until the RSI comes out, in this case, of the oversold conditions. That's the that's what we're particularly looking for there. Okay, and it's just one little quick clear example there that you can see, you know, and it has been in a uh, particularly uh, good strong trend. So, uh, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We uh, as always we've run out of time there a little bit. I apologise. Okay, we always never have enough time. Always lots to share and talk about. But um, I hope that uh, you found that useful. I hope that's given you a an understanding of the RSI. And more importantly, how you could utilize RSI to just make yourself a very simple trade plan, regardless of whether you know you trade weekly and daily charts or whether you trade you know one hour, fifteen minute intraday charts. There's a way to use that. You know, use the RSI to identify bias and trend, and then use it to identify execution, and then also where to get out of that trade when it's run for you. So, uh, as always, I hope you found that useful. It just, it's just for me to just basically say, I wish you the very best of success in your own trading, ladies and gentlemen. And I look forward to speaking to you at the uh, next Admiral's Trading Spotlight session. Trade well, everybody. Cheers.